2002, we had a slowdown. 2007 and 8 was worse because the debt was so much worse. Next time, the debt is staggering. So the next time we have a slowdown, the problems are going to be a whole lot worse because we've shot our bullets. Mr. Rogers, is the European rescue going to work? Oh, absolutely. You mean this latest round? This latest round, Absolutely yes. not. You know, absolutely not. Absolutely not. You're going to be able to report on this for years to come, probably. Uh, it's going to continue because they can't get it together. They don't understand the problem. They just keep getting, trying to get through the next election. It's going to fall apart eventually. When does eventually happen? Well, the German election is next year. I'm not sure when the German election is, because they don't know. But after the German election, I suspect things would probably start to fall apart. After the German election? So they're going to hang on until then? Mrs. Merkel wants to get reelected. Mr. Obama wants to get reelected, so he's going to put all kind of pressure on and help to the extent that he can. Mrs. Merkel wants to get reelected, so, but after the German election, I would suspect we should all be very, very worried. I'm very worried about 2013 anyway, and 2014, but especially after the German election. Your former partner, George Soros, gave a speech a few weeks ago that was much debated in Europe, in which he agreed with you that Europe hasn't gotten ahead of the curve yet, that it's still on the brink, but he also argued that it, there was still a chance, there was still a possibility for Europe to hang together, provided the Germans took sufficiently decisive action. Is he wrong? Well, that's, you have to ask him. I don't know. That's not what I, I said. I said that this is not solving the problem, that all they're doing is pushing the problem out into the future and hoping the problem will go away. I suspect the euro as we know it will not survive. It's unfortunate because the world needs something like the euro to compete with the U.S. dollar and the euro is, on paper is perfect. Now even a reconstituted euro could be good. I mean, if you take out the weak sisters and start over with a sound euro, the problem is once you start having people withdraw, it turns into such chaos, such turmoil, that everything probably falls apart at that situation. Um, so you should be very worried. So the question, the question to my mind is, what happens if it all falls apart, um, if people start withdrawing? You would probably, I hope you would then have a currency backed by strong economies, the Netherlands, Austria, perhaps, Finland, perhaps, you know, people who, who mind their manners and pay their bills. So, so you can imagine a sort of a core Eurozone? That's what I would suggest would be better for Europe and better for the world if these other people do pull out, which I suspect they will do. Now, the risk, though, Christy, is that they all pull out. And then we all go back to the Deutsche Mark and the Drachma and the French franc and the rest of it. And Europe has its same old chaos, or not chaos, but problems. And surely also, you know, there might reach a point at which the process can't be controlled. Even no, if people... that's the point. That's my point, that if Greece pulls out, then somebody else is going to say, I'll win an election by pulling out, and then somebody else will, and the next thing you know, everybody's pulling out to win elections. And at that point, it all falls apart. Now, Mr. Rogers, you said 2013 is a year you're very worried about. Are you worried about the U.S. in 2013? I'm more worried about the other, well, I'm worried about everybody. The U.S. has had recessions every four to six years since the beginning of the, of the Republic. Well, you can add, 2013 is after the election, it's four to six years, and so we're going to have a slowdown in 2013. Even slower than the economy is now? Have, oh, have yes, we yes, properly yes. recovered from 2009 no, 2009? Proper, we haven't properly recovered. It's going to be worse. It's certainly going to be worse next year. 2002, we had a slowdown. 2007 and 8 was worse because the debt was so much worse. Next time, the debt is staggering, so the next time we have a slowdown, the problems are going to be a whole lot worse because we've shot our bullets. I mean, what more can they do? Can they quadruple the debt again? Can they print even more money? I mean, the world's going to run out of, of paper money if they keep trying to, to print money at that rate. So 2013 is going to be serious problems, 2014, and it may be partially because the euro starts falling apart. There are many reasons to cause the next recession. There's always a reason to cause recession, but it's coming. Slowdown's coming. It's going to be worse. And that will, of course, affect Europe. That may make some more people, more politicians say, well, I want to get out too. No, you should be very worried about 2013 and 14. Now, Mr. Rogers, who do you think would be a more able guide in this turbulent economic year of the United States? 
Barack Obama or Mitt Romney? Oh, please. Neither. I mean, they're... But uh, someone, it's got to be one or the other. There's, well, this, this, uh, is, this uh, is... This unfortunately, is, uh, I think you're probably right. It does have to be one or the other. Uh, I don't see that either would be better. No. You this, think they're, they're exactly the same? You are indifferent? I would vote who for wins? neither. As far as I'm concerned, a pox on both of their houses. No. The only hope is that Romney would bring in some better people. I mean, the people that Obama is don't have a clue which is one reason the problem keeps getting worse and worse. Now, I don't know who Romney would bring in, but I, don't, I know they couldn't be worse. Is there a chance that if Romney is elected, you have uh, at least an end to the absolute gridlock in Washington with the fight between the White House and Congress, and that that could be positive? Well, you, you, could, you could end the gridlock, but that might be worse, because they may do even worse things than what they're doing now. I mean, if they continue to run up debts and, and raising taxes, I mean, taxes are supposed to go up next year. I mean, they could raise taxes higher if you're in the gridlock, whether it's the Democrats or the Republicans. Don't taxes have to increase? I mean, you've complained about the debt. You're worried about no, that. No, Aren't higher taxes no, a way out? Taxes would make it worse. Taxes, we've got a slowing economy. We've got an economy that's got problems. Raising taxes is not going to help. No, no, you've got to cut spending with a, with a chainsaw. That's the only solution to this problem. And you really should be cutting taxes, not raising taxes. You should be cutting spending and cutting taxes. Now, Mr. Rogers, you are well known to be bullish on Asia. You made the big decision to move your life to Asia. Your children speak Chinese. How do things look from there? People are starting to get worried about a slowdown in China in particular. Well, China has been trying to slow its economy for three years. If people are just now figuring that out, they, they, should, they should watch Thomson Reuters and more often because China raised interest rates six times. They raised reserve requirements 12 times. I wish they were running our central bank. No, no, China is slowing down by design, on purpose. So yes, they're trying to kill the property bu bubble. They're trying to slow inflation. They seem to have done so, at least to their satisfaction, not to mine, but to theirs. And now they're loosening up again. China is slowing, but it's, it was part of the plan. So is this, is it a good plan? Is this a controlled slowdown that we should be cheering? So far, it has been a controlled slowdown. Uh, I wouldn't be loosening up yet, but I'm not a Chinese politician. I don't have to, to worry about riots in the streets. They're starting to slow up. So far, it's been successful. There, too, they're going to have the problem next year of Europe and America. You know, Europe is the largest economy in the world, Europe as a whole. America is the second largest. So when the two largest economies in the world are having problems, everybody gets affected. Everybody, no matter how dynamic and smart you are, you get affected. So Asia is going to be affected, too. Okay, so you have now depressed me thoroughly. <laughs> Europe, a mess. The United States, a pox on both the houses of the two presidential contenders. Asia sort of has its act together, but going to be affected by the weakness of the two giants. What's the safe haven? What's the good bet for investors? Well, I don't know. The word safe, in using, I never use the word safe when I talk about investments because I don't know anything that's safe. Maybe I should watch Thompson Reuters more because to find the safe investments. Uh, things where I have my money, I own commodities, I own currencies, and I'm short stocks. Uh, I would suspect that agriculture is probably the, safe, the, the least risky uh, part of the world economy going forward. Uh, I don't really know m many havens. Agriculture is going to do extremely well in the next 10, 20 years. Other thing, water treatment is going to do extremely well, certainly in Asia. There are things that are going to do well. But well, we've had many periods in world history when the world economy has been bad. It doesn't always have to be good. It never has been always good, in fact. So we're going to have more problems. You've said you own currencies as well? Yes. Which ones? On the Swiss franc, mainly the Swiss franc, the Japanese yen, and the U.S. dollar. Renminbi? Oh, yeah, of course I own the renminbi. But that's, you can't just pick up the phone and buy, buy a lot of renminbi. But every chance I get to buy renminbi legally, I do so. And commodities, which ones are you the most interested in? Well, I'm more interested in, in uh, agriculture than anything else because agricultural prices are extremely depressed on a historic basis. You know, Christian, the, the price of sugar is down something like 75 or 80 percent over the past 37, 38 years. I mean, it's staggering how cheap some of these agricultural products still are. And how about things like oil? Well, I own all commodities, including oil. Uh, oil is having a correction at the moment, but the surprise will be how high the price of oil stays and how high it goes. We're running out of known reserves of oil. I mean, unless... We found some new ones, though. 
right? I mean, no what do you think? No giants? You're, you're not excited about the Brazil fines? Well, if you own the Brazil fine, yeah, it's great, but Christian, that's only maybe 10 billion barrels. I mean, the world, that's nothing. We use 86, 87 million barrels of oil every day. Do the arithmetic, 10 billion barrels. If you own the 10 billion barrels, you're very excited about it. But that's not a giant. We need a couple of Saudi Arabias going forward. Gold? I own gold. I certainly own gold. I'm not selling my gold. If gold goes down some more, I, I will probably, I hope I'm smart enough to buy more gold. If it goes down a lot, I hope I'm smart enough to buy a lot, a lot more gold. Gold's going much higher over the decade. And does your bearishness on stocks include technology stocks? I'm sure technology sucks, so I hope, I hope it You're does. You're extremely bearish. How come? Isn't that the uh, one sector of innovation and sort of growth and creativity in the world economy? Doesn't everybody know that? Isn't that in the price of the stocks? Aren't these stocks at very high prices? I mean, this thing called Facebook is at, what, even now it's still at 27. It's huge multiples. No, no, I, I, I can't conceive of paying those prices for technology stocks. And, but everybody is paying, that's why I'm sure. Mr. Rogers, you are known for being a contrarian, a guy who sees around corners. What's your new, new thing? What, what's the big new idea? Well, I guess, I guess I'll tell you the most exciting thing I know is Myanmar. Uh, I, I'm wildly excited about what's happening in Myanmar. In 1962, it was the richest country in Asia. They closed off. Now it's the poorest country, and they're opening up again. It's like investing in China in 1978 or 79. It's that cheap and it's that exciting. And so, and if you don't want to invest in Myanmar, North Korea, North Korea, well, it's difficult for people like you and me to invest in North Korea, but North Korea is going to merge with South Korea within the foreseeable future, next five years, say. So Myanmar is really the place. That's the place that's viable and the place it's practical to invest in. And you should put all of your money into Myanmar if you can. It's that exciting. How much of yours have you put there? Virtually none. <laughs> well, that's because it's, it was only it's only been about two weeks that it's been legal, you know. That's two weeks. That's 14 days. <laughs> yeah, I expect. But there's no stock market. I mean, it's, it's, as I say, it's not that it's not that easy. A year ago, it was illegal for me to spell Myanmar. You know, I couldn't even you you foreigners were not supposed to even mention Myanmar under American law. So, but that's all changing. It's changing just as we speak. They don't have the, the stock market's not developed yet. All this stuff is so like like China in 1978. It's all brand new. The current, they just started getting a currency about two months ago. It's, 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 it's raw, it's nothing. Everybody has got um, you know, some disclosure that shows Greece is a very small part of what we do. And every time I hear that from the banks, it reminds me of 2007 when subprime was such a small part of the, the U.S. economy.